Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about a sound card and not just any sound card, maybe at least the latest and maybe the greatest. I'll explain it a bit more to you. First off, uh, this will be the last uh, sound card review that I'm going to do in some time. I've been buying a lot of sound cards now, well not, been, not a lot, but certainly more than I'm used to. And uh, my wife has been asking me questions about, well, what are you going to do with all those sound cards when you've done reviewing them? Because you can only listen to one at a time. And I think she's right. I don't think I know she's right, but don't tell my wife that. Um, so I'm going to pick my favorite and I'm going to use it for a while. Maybe switch to another one. It depends on my mood. Um, the greatest, well, that depends on the reviews and the usage that I've done. Um, this is it. It's the Creative Sound Blaster Z. It's not the ZX. The X is the one with the microphone, the beam forming microphone. It used to be included with this set, but when I bought it secondhand, the guy didn't have the microphone anymore or, or it was broken. Doesn't really matter. I got it for 30 euros, and so it was a bit of a bargain, uh, again. <laughs> and I'm happy to get all those bargains. Uh, when I got it, it, it was an excellent shape. I like this metal shroud that's over it. It's kind of heavy. It's a heavy sound guard. And... Um, Everybody knows by now that I'm against RGB, but there are two red uh, LEDs in here that it light up when you plug it in your system. I only wonder what those will do because the sound card will be this way in your system. So you won't see the cool cover and the cool lights. So you have to bend over to see it. Just so to make the intro way longer than I was um, prepared to do, let's head over to those specifications. After that, I'm going to tell you what I think about the sound card and the sound quality and the usage and everything. And I'm going to show you the uh, driver interface that comes with the sound card. The specifications for the Creative Sound Blaster Z. It was introduced back in 2012, which makes this card over seven years old. The current price, that's the lowest price that I could find, is 78 euros and 82 cents. That's over here in the Netherlands. And uh, the signal to noise ratio is rated at 116 decibels, which is actually quite good. It makes uh, places this card in third place um, uh, after the Creative uh, AE5, which has a signal to noise ratio of 122 decibels, and the old asus sonar phoebus solo which has a signal to noise ratio of 118 decibels sampling rate is 192 kilohertz it has a digital to analog conversion resolution of 24 bits which is all kind of standard and then the audio pre processor is one from creative labs now this is the interface for the sound card and you got your sound blaster x pro studio button which adds a lot of uh, claims to add surround sound which is, in my opinion is always a lot of echoing in the background which is supposed to be surround sound it has your crystallizer your bass crossover frequency if you have several speakers set up you can enter your crossover frequency smart volume which is uh, kind of cool and also smart to use because well you won't get deaf and a dialogue plus which is a setting that i didn't find any use for because it didn't work in my uh my opinion crystal voice i've tried to use it with some of my friends during gaming but they didn't seem to notice anything so maybe it's a driver thing maybe it doesn't do anything it's okay for the effects but you're not going to use it in a normal setting scout mode that's the same as in the sound blaster ae5 didn't work there didn't work here maybe it's something with my hardware so this is also nice you can uh, select your speakers headphones cinematic settings with the dolby digital dolby digital live uh the mixer which is well what you expect it to be equalizer if you want to use it in with all the different settings there uh i usually turn off the equalizer because well it's supposed to sound good already so you don't need that but still 
And well, these are the settings for this card. Now, I must be a bit frank with you because when I got the sound card um, and I bought it secondhand online, um, I wasn't expecting that much from it. Um, why? Well, I was, maybe it was just the RGB thing that didn't get me going. <laughs> Uh, I really dislike RGB. Uh, the sound components on there weren't as good as the other sound cards that I have. Maybe the one with the Bur uh, Bur Brown things on it, or maybe the one with the Sabre the digital to analog converter. But still, the it, it, it wasn't that good, in my opinion. But I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, and I must say that I'm, well, sort of amazed. Uh, the sound quality is actually quite good. Um so, well, would I recommend it? Well, at 80 euros, that's the current price over here in the Netherlands. Um, if you have 80 euros to spend, spend it on an Asus Xoner AE and don't spend it on this one. It is a good card, I really must admit, and it has the uh, Sony Philips digital interface in and out, which is quite good for, if you, for those who need it. It also has some other features which I liked. Uh, you can plug in the uh, front uh, audio plugins of your system case. Um, it has all these nice features and it isn't a bad card, but the others are better or cheaper. So if you have the money, buy a Creative Sound Blaster X AE5 or get the cheaper one, which is the Asus Xoner AE. If you've already bought it, well, be happy with it and I wouldn't buy any other card because this is a really good card. The, uh, the driver interface is good and it's overall a good card. So that's it for, my, for me for today. Next video will be, uh, well, a sort of a big one. And um, I hope to see you there. Uh, please leave a like and please don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.